Okay, so for most of you who are listening to this video, chances are very high that you followed a plant-based diet for years, maybe you still do. And if you've come to this video, chances are also very high that that diet has made you sick, right? So we then ask the question, okay, what is it specifically in that diet that's making us sick? And of course, there are other videos you can find on this channel and other channels about plant toxicity in general. Um, but the fact is, you know, for many of us, I wouldn't necessarily say for most of us, but for many of us, not all plants are equally toxic, right? We, we generally have some tolerance to some plants, but there's some plant foods that I find that almost no one has a tolerance for, right? So in recent years, there's been this talk about non-celiac gluten sensitivity or non-celiac wheat sensitivity. Um, wheat becomes a food and sort of by, you know, wheat, we're talking about breads, we're talking about flatbreads, we're talking about naans, we're talking about pastas and so on. Um, why is that such a problematic food um, today, right? So in order to understand that, I think we have to understand the digestive tract in a little bit more detail, right? So the digestive tract, tract is quite um, complicated, and I, I don't really have time to get into any, everything, but let's just talk about a couple of key components, right? So one key component is um, the microbiome, for example, is something that comes up a lot. So these are the, the bacteria that live in our gut. In fact, they live in our mouth. They live all over the, the digestive tract. Um, and they're, you know, in, in number, in, in terms of volume of DNA, they're actually more us than us, right? They're more of them than there are human cells in our body, right? So that, that's worth knowing. But when I look at the data on the microbiome, I'm just a little, I'm left a little flat. I, I can't really figure out, you know, whether it's that relevant. What I can say is that healthy people tend to have healthy microbiomes. I'm not sure if you do things to fix your microbiome through oral supplementation, that that does anything. There are things like fecal transplants that, that seem to have had some success in some cases. So let's leave the microbiome aside. What else can we talk about when we talk about the digestive tract? We can talk about the acidity of the stomach. Most people actually do not have stomachs that are acid enough, so we need to find a way to support that with digestive en enzymes or something else. But one thing that we also need to talk about is the small intestine in particular. The small intestine is where you are absorbing most of the vitamins, nutrients, and even macronutrients, so fats, proteins, um, carbohydrates, all of that is getting digested in the small intestine. And the small intestine, as I've mentioned elsewhere, is made up of a single-celled lining, kind of like the, the uh, epidermis on your skin, but this is several layers. That's just one layer, and they're very, very tightly... Uh, packed together. So it's like, imagine two bricks. They are kind of brick-shaped, um, but there's no mortar between the bricks. They're just very, very tight. And, and there's a molecule um, called the gliadin protein of wheat, and there are similar molecules in other, um, you know, grains that what they do is they, they push that aside, right? And when you push that aside, of course, we have 70 to 80% of our immune system just on the other side of that lining because it's afraid <laughs> that something's going to come in that's not supposed to come in. So uh, what you're doing when you eat wheat, when you eat wheat with um, food, when you eat wheat with, I'm not considering wheat food, right? So when you have, you know, whatever it is, say bread with your steak or something like this, what you're doing is you're making it less likely for that steak to be digested in a proper way because you're having it with bread. And you're making it more likely that you're going to have some kind of an autoimmune flare-up if you have autoimmune disease, or more likely to develop autoimmune disease in the future because you are, um, you know, you're really giving all those outside molecules straight to the, straight to the gut, straight to the the immune system, which is on the other side of the gut, right? So um, for this reason, it's it's really super. I would say, you know, I, I don't want to be like hysterical and say it's super dangerous, but as we get older. It, it just, why would we want to have things that impair our digestion when we're trying to digest things better? What is the logic, right? Why are you having this with your food, with proper food, right? Um, it doesn't serve any purpose. The other thing that it does, because most forms of wheat um, tend to be very high on the glycemic index, they have a high glycemic load. So you're just increasing sugar intake and inflammation overall at the same time as you're increasing the intake of this particular molecule, which is destroying your gut, right? So, you know, when people ask me what are the plant foods they should uh, avoid, wheat is at the top of the list. So with that, I'm Samir. I'm a health coach and a PhD student. I'll see you next time.